guys, welcome back to another video. As most of you know, the Champions League group stages has recently been drawn. And uh, so I wanted to go ahead and take a look at them with you guys and give you my predictions on who I think is going to win the group, who's going to come in last, and who might be able to go to the Europa League. So let's go ahead and start get started. Now, we start off Group A with Dortmund, Atletico Madrid, Club Bruges, and Monaco. And I feel like Atletico Madrid have enough capacity to be able to win this group. But in first place, um, of course, Monaco did lose have lost a couple of key figures throughout the past couple of seasons. This season that we've seen is lost Fabinho, who, who of course went to Liverpool. So I feel like they do did lose a lot of stars. So before, if they would have been able to keep at least a couple of their players from their quarterfinal season, uh, I think they might have been able to get in second place. But for now, they're going to be down in third with Dortmund, uh, barely making it into second place. And then Club Bruges, fortunately, you know, last place for them. So yeah, I think Atletico Madrid have enough firepower to be able to fly, fly past most of these clubs. Uh, Dortmund is going to try to put up a bit of a challenge, but they have also lost a couple of players. But of course, they have Marco Royce, who's starting to come back in form and who have not been injured in the past couple of months. So it's going to be a good and chaining group. Group B, we have Barcelona, Internacional, or Inter Milan, uh, Spurs, and PSV with, of course, Chucky Lozano, who had an amazing World Cup, but, you know, Moving on from that, uh, Barcelona, of course, is going to uh, have Coutinho. They are going to be able to use him in the Champions League. They weren't able to use him last season because, of course, he did play for Liverpool. So I feel like even adding him into the already amazing squad they have is going to give him an already, uh, already unneeded boost that they don't need. So, of course, they're going to get first place. Inter have really made a big splash in the transfer market this season. They did sign a lot of key players. They did steal uh, nine goal in from Roma, and they... Do have already a pretty good squad, just Hananovic being a pretty safe keeper in the back, and then they do have a lot of attacking options. Of course, they were able to keep Perisic when he was linked to Man United for the past couple transfer windows. He is going to be a great asset to them. And Spurs, they shocked everyone last the last Champions League when they beat Real Madrid three to one. But I feel like they aren't able going to get through this group just with the amount of talent this group has, even though. The teams are, you can argue they're quite not on the world stage level. They do have a lot of talent, especially uh, Internationale and PSV, who has made it almost dominate the uh, their league. Group C, we have PSG, Liverpool, Napoli, and Red Star Belgrade. Uh, of course, uh, PSG, they did flop out with Neymar last Champions League, so I feel like this season is going to be their season to prove. They made a huge acquirement of Gigi Buffon from Juventus, who may, many people may argue that he's getting old, he's past his prime, but I feel like he's still going to be a huge asset to them. The goalkeepers is a position they have been struggling the past couple of seasons. That's the one key position I feel like they haven't really striked since. But now that Buffon is there, they could finally that could finally be the last piece of their puzzle that they need. So they're going to finish up in first place. Second, Liverpool. I feel like they, they had the most complete transfer window of all the clubs. They assessed every single key area that they needed to they brought someone in although way overpriced as in Allison but um, they really did bring every single player that they needed in to strengthen each and every other so they're gonna get second but I feel like they just don't have enough talent to beat PSG to the first top space uh, Napoli if this was last season I would have put him in second above Liverpool but I just feel like they just don't have the enough firepower to be able to blast through either PSG or Liverpool they do have a lot of talented players in Dries Mertens, of course, Hampshire being the creative master that he is. But I do not feel like I have enough to get past through them. And Red Star Belgrade, I feel like they're... It's just, it's more. Moving on to Group D, we have Galatasaray, Lokomotiv from Moscow. We do have uh, Porto and Schalke. And I think Galatasaray is going to win the group. They have a lot of experience getting into the knockout fixtures. So be it not deeper into the knockout stages, but... Getting past that first group stage, you do have a lot of experience in it. Porto and Schalke, they both don't have that quite uh, firepower that you would need in both teams. Porto obviously has lost a couple of players over throughout the seasons, and then um, they have really they haven't really been producing as much as they used to. They really used to be known for such a good youth academy, bringing up a lot of players. But I feel like Porto is going to finish in second place. They're going to be able to just get the runner up, and they probably will get knocked down around 16. But in third place, it's going to be Schalke. They do have Julian Brandt. He is an amazing kid. Uh, I feel like I really rate him as a top-piece player. But 
I just don't think he's enough to be able to just push them past. Now in Group A, we do have Athens or AEK, Ajax, Bayern Munich, and Benfica. So I, this is a real tough one, but of course Bayern winning it. Who else? But yeah, Bayern Munich are gonna win the group. Of course, they do have the best squad out of these four teams. Luckily for Arsenal, they're not in the Champions League, so they don't have to be scared of them. But second place is gonna be Ajax. They that's like I really highly rate them as a club outside the Europe's top five. I feel like they really are up there with them. Um, they do produce a lot of wonderful footballers, and of course, they do have an amazing coach and John Boyer, and they do all right you know they're not that type of team that will just knock down they actually do put up a fight against the bigger teams following and jackson third place is going to be benfica benfica are a big powerhouse in their own league in the portuguese league but i feel like they aren't strong enough to be able to pass, push past these little teams and of course in last place is going to be athens on group f we have hoffenheim, hoffenheim man city Shakhtar Donetsk and Lyon and of course Manchester City is going to take first place I do believe that they have the best squad in that group and they added even more to their already embarrassing embarrassingly good squad Shakhtar Donetsk I feel like they're going to get second place but honestly this team is this group is pretty even I feel like the main turnaround will be that if whoever can take any points away against Man City will be the ones that will finish in second place because Man City are the team to beat in that group and Shakhtar Donetsk were the first team to beat them I believe two seasons ago in the Champions League tour or last season they were the first team to beat Man City when Man City looked completely unstoppable so they could probably retry that again but yeah I feel like whoever does take down Man City first or at least earns a draw will be able to get second place. Now following them in Group G, we have CSKA Moscow, Real Madrid, Roma, and Pisan, I believe. Pisan? Am I pronouncing it right? I'm probably not. But of course, Real Madrid is going to top of the table. They did lose Cristiano Ronaldo, arguably one of the best soccer players in the world, let alone his own team and league. They do lose him, the huge major player to lose, but Real Madrid have won the Champions League three times in the past four seasons, three seasons, sorry. In Group G, we do have the current title winners, Real Madrid, Pisan, Roma, and CSK in Moscow. Um, of course, Real Madrid did lose their biggest player in, in Cristiano Ronaldo. He went to Juventus this transfer window, and I feel like they still are going to be a big threat in Champions League, although they do not have Ronaldo, and although they still have not brought in a big replacement for him as of the date recording of this video, but they should easily pass most of the teams in the group. Roma did lose some big players this transfer window. Of course, Allison going to Liverpool and what was then a record-breaking fee for a goalkeeper. They also did lose Nangolin, who was a big, strong asset to him in the midfield. Nice play, play breaker, and he was just that tough guy in the midfield that would always try to break up whatever the other team was trying to build up. So I feel like although they do lose those players, they still have more than enough talent to uh, be able to get second place and keep on to the round of 16. Moscow, CSK, Moscow, their biggest asset to be able to advance from the third place I have them in is to get all three points at home. Their home is probably one of their biggest advantages that they have because traveling teams going to Russia and playing there, they do have more difficulty just because of differences in temperature and differences of the pitch. So that is they're going to be their biggest access, the home advantage. And if they can make an upset against either Roma or get a draw against Real Madrid, they do have a good position. On Group H, we have Juventus, Real Madrid, Valencia from Spain, and then Young Boys. Juventus, of course, did buy Cristiano Ronaldo from Real Madrid. This transfer window, that is going to be a huge upgrade for them. Well, but while they did get Cristiano Ronaldo, they did let Hiwain go to AC Milan for uh, on a loan. So I feel like Cristiano Ronaldo, if he does win the Champions League with Juventus this season, mark my words, there is no argument against him being not being the best footballer in the whole world. If he does manage to get Juventus Champions League title he will undisputedly be able to be call himself the best footballer in the world. Juventus brought in Higuain for that exact reason, to be able to push them to the next level, but as we have seen, it has not been enough. So now they push beyond Higuain to Cristiano Ronaldo, looking for him to deliver them a Champions League title, which he has a lot of experience doing, mind you. What was that? 
What was that, Tony? What? You said uh, United are gonna win the group? Well, I agree with you. Don't listen, Tony. While I am a United fan at heart, I do have to face the cruel reality of that there is a possibility we might not get out the group stage. That's just the reality of it. it is. We are going through a period, a hard period right now, where it looks like Jose might get sacked. Uh, lots of players are underperforming. Some players are even uh, really, they don't seem dedicated when they're on that pitch. And our, just, our team just does not look like it's ready to contend for any trophies this season as of right now. Having said that, I still have faith in my club, and I do believe we are going to come in second. Um, I hope we come in second. The Valencia, of course, are a good team from Spain. They also do have a very good chance of coming in second, knocking us out. If we don't change, if United don't change their ways or don't figure out their situation at the club right now with what is happening, I feel like it could cost us in the Champions League. Getting out early would be just embarrassing. So yeah, having said that, I do believe Juve is going to top the club with United following in, Valencia, and then Young Boys at the bottom. Who do I think is going to win the Champions League? All in all, I think um, the final will be Real Madrid and Juventus. Both teams have excellent squads, although Real Madrid still have not found a replacement for Cristiano Ronaldo. There has been links of them going in for Dybala for 150 million euros. So. They still have, do have a week to sign someone for to replace Cristiano Ronaldo or at least to fill in that gap he has left. But I do feel even then, Real Madrid and Juventus both have some of the most complete squads. Barcelona, of course, their squad is pretty good. They do have a lot of talented players in there. Of course, they have Lionel Messi, Luis Suarez. But they have not been able to get past some of the tougher teams this opposition. Of course, we saw last season with Roma amazing comeback amazing game probably one of the best games i've ever witnessed but i feel like barcelona haven't lost that bit of swagger they used to carry with them of course this isn't trying to uh talk them down they still are one of the best clubs in the whole world but i do feel they not the same as they were a few seasons ago so yeah that's all i have for today um if you guys did like the video or have any suggestions about what y'all want me to talk about just let it down in the comments um if you did like the video please subscribe it would help me out a lot and then leave a comment